Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again, and today we're going to be doing a full unboxing and first impressions, I guess kind of like a review of this USB-C 6-in-1 multifunction hub for the Steam Deck. Obviously, this is a third-party uh, Steam Deck dock. It's not the official one by Steam. I do wish, I, I so sadly do not have the official Steam dock for the Steam Deck. It's kind of a tongue twister there. That one is going for about $90 retail. Now there is a few features with the official Steam Deck dock that you will not get with this one or honestly with any of the third party docks for the Steam Deck, which includes new updates to firmware over time. So if anything were to happen with the docking station, any new updates, whatever, they can roll it straight through the OS uh, through to the Steam Dock, which is pretty cool, which you will not get sadly with any third party accessories. However, what I've seen with all the reviews on these third party docking stations for the Steam Deck, they're pretty ravingly good. And most people have had little to no issues whatsoever. The USB ports and the HDMI ports and the USB-C ports work just like they would on the full official Steam Dock and for half the price, if not even cheaper. So it's one of those things that this is where I come in is, is this really worth it? to spend, I believe this is going for about $47 US right now on Amazon. I will have a link in the description because yes, this was sent to me for review. So I do wanna give a quick shout out to the guys over at Funalot for sending me this device to test out for you guys on the channel. So if you do want to go check them out, I do have an affiliate link in the description below. It does help out the channel a lot, but I'm going to give you guys my honest opinion. If this thing sucks, if it doesn't work the way it's supposed to, I'm going to be completely honest with you and show it on camera. But if it works just like it's supposed to, and you don't have to go out and spend $90 versus only $47, I'm going to recommend this guy over the official Steam Deck. But again, disclaimer, I don't have the official one next to me to actually test out or to put up head to head. But again, if this does what it's supposed to do, in my opinion, What's the real reason to go for the Steam Deck or the official one, right? So let's get it open here. Let's go around the box. I don't think this is the official retail branding. I think this is like the press release or pre-release version. So take this box with a grain of salt for what it has on it or what it's showing. But this only comes with the actual dock itself. It doesn't come with a USB-C to wall adapter. So I have one already plugged in here. I'm going to use the official Steam Deck charger uh, to plug into here. And we'll test it out on a monitor. I do have my television in the living room, which I probably will be using this from basically full time uh, after I'm done recording the video. But I will show you guys a quick example of what it's like connected to just a monitor uh, so you can get that full 1080p upscaling. But this does support up to 4K resolution at 60 hertz, which is pretty amazing. It has a one gigabit Ethernet port. So if you do want to hardwire the Internet to it, you don't have to use Wi-Fi anymore. You can do that with this docking station It's pretty cool. It does have three USB 3.0 slots, which are fast speed charging USBs, as well as a USB-C port. But this is the one that you're going to be using to charge the dock uh, as it's being used in the docking station. Now, yes, you can use the Steam Deck with the dock without charging it, uh, but it will probably use up more battery life than if you were just using the Steam Deck standalone. So just keep that in mind. It's probably a good idea to always have it plugged in with the USB-C. They did also send me this carrying case as well. It's more of a grip case in a way. And if you guys haven't seen on my channel, I did have a grip case review that I purchased myself, but this one was sent to me by the same guys. So we will be get, getting a quick look at this and installing it as well. And just like with the docking station, I will have a link to this in the description as well if you would like to go check it out. And lastly, they sent me these little protective kit stickers. I'm assuming these are kind of just like a little sticker you put over the touch pads, just like dbrand makes to help with smudges and scratches and stuff. So we'll also probably be installing those as well, just to see what they look like. So let's get out the brand new knife. As you can see, we got it here. Now this is actually a brand I've never heard of, but I ended up getting it because of my boy Flossie Carter, showed it on his channel and I absolutely love this thing. It's a beautiful knife, absolutely gorgeous. I love the color, I love the red accents as well. And it's from CJRB is the brand. They make really good high quality custom knives. So definitely go check them out. I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna go check them one out, but I'm not affiliated with them in any way, shape or form. I purchased this with my own money, but uh, absolutely loving it. But this is gonna be the official unboxing knife on the channel uh, for years to come. So with that, let's actually open up this baby. This is the first ever cut with this knife on the channel. So pretty excited, I'm a little nervous. Oh, that just cut like butter. Look at that. Boom. We can put that away. And let's flip this open. 
And there we got the dock itself. And that's pretty much it that's in the box other than just a little quick start guide. And on the quick start guide, we just have the USB-C six in one. And it tells you what the different ports are. Again, we have three USB-C or three USB-A, one USB-C, HDMI 2.0 up to 4K resolution. And then we have the ethernet port, which is one gigabit speed, which is pretty cool. We'll get this out of its plastic shell here. And there she is. I'm actually kind of pleasantly surprised. It feels like a metal, actually. It's an aluminum frame, which by the pictures, I was expecting it to be plastic. So good on them for that. They do have some rubber casing in here to keep the Steam Deck in place. And it is a silverish metallic look or color. Uh, I do like the color. I really do. I thought it was going to be stealthy black or like the same black as the Steam Deck. But I do like this metallic gray. It looks pretty nice. Ethernet port on the right side. Going to the back. Again, we have the three USB 3.0 slots, HDMI and the USB-C. And then of course the USB-C that goes to the top of the Steam Deck uh, to plug into it to get it power. And then we have some rubber feet on the bottom. Keep it in place so it doesn't slide around on the desk. So out of curiosity, let's just prop it up real quick here. That, I mean, that feels pretty good. It's very steady. That is not going anywhere. If you have your Steam Deck in there, you don't have to worry about it falling over or anything like that. It is not going anywhere. And again, with those rubber feet, I have to give it a lot of force really to move it. So yeah, that is not going anywhere. Let's plug it in here just to see how this looks. Cool. USB port right in there. No problemo. Now let's get the box open for the grip case. This one does not have any tape on it, so we can just slide this out. There we go. Let's have a piece of styrofoam in here to keep its shape. And that is the grip case. Nothing too fancy. I mean, it looks a lot like the one that I actually already have, uh, which I paid about $40 for. I don't have the price of this on the top of my head uh, for what they're going retail on it, but I know it's cheaper than 40 bucks. But again, I'll link in the description below if you do want to go check it out. We do have all the, the proper cutouts for the Steam Deck. On the top here, we actually have the power button, which is covered, which is pretty cool. We have an opening slot for the trigger, and then that's the LED, and then we have the USB port, some grills for the ventilation. I believe this is a microphone, and then the power or the volume up and volume down, which are also covered, which is a pretty cool little touch, and then another slot for the other trigger. And then we also obviously have an open ventilation for the back fan as well as open slots for the back buttons. And we do have a stand which does pop out. So let's see, how does that work? So I think we pry it out like that. And then you fold it up and lock it into place. And that's how the stand works, just like that. Pretty simple. And then if you wanna put it away, I think you just take it out or you push up. Okay, so kind of a, honestly, a little bit of a cumbersome I'm not a huge fan of that of that kickstand. So for instance, on my main grip case here, which again, this is a little bit more expensive. The way this works, you pull it out and it automatically locks into place. And then when you're done, you just slap it shut. Uh, so again, it's a little bit easier to use. It's a little quicker. So I probably would prefer that design over this one, but it still gets the job done. And it is nice that it is included because I didn't need a stand. They didn't need to include this. It's just an extra little thing. And they, and they do give you alternate positions as well, it looks like. So if you want it to be a little bit higher up or to lean back a little farther, if you're watching a movie or something, you can do that. So there is plus and minuses to this design, but it's a little bit more cumbersome having to rip it out of its slot, bring it up, and then to snap it back into place. Let's see if I can even do this. There we go, to keep it in place. But it's not gonna fall out with movement, which is nice. But yeah, that's just something to be aware of. Then we have this plastic back when the rest is made of rubber, but to be honest, it's a pretty high quality rubber. It feels pretty sturdy in the hand. It doesn't flex too much. When you do flex, it does pop out the back stand, but that is, I guess, something. But yeah, so if you do flex it, the, the stand does pop out, but that's not gonna happen when it's on the device itself. But with that, let's actually pop this thing on and uh, see what it looks like once installed. All right, and she's on there. So it, it does cover it pretty well. It feels really good and grippy in the hand. The one thing I do like is I do have little cutouts around the buttons, both on the B and on the D-pad, as you can see. So that's kind of a cool little uh, aesthetic choice. I like that they went that where they actually didn't even do that with my main grip case that I've been using. 
So as you can see, it's just flat on both sides. They didn't actually do little cutouts for it. So that is a nice little attention to detail. Got to give them props for that. And then of course we have the back, which gives you plenty of room for the vents and the buttons. I don't feel like anything's being taken over. The triggers still work without any issue. Nothing is being covered up. And then of course we have the power button. We have the LED. We have the USB port, which doesn't seem to be covered. We have the ventilation on top, headphone jack. It was a headphone jack. I don't know why I, I forgot about that. I guess 2022, it's kind of weird seeing headphone jacks on devices. So <laughs> wasn't used to seeing that. And then we have the volume up and down, which again is covered. And then the other triggers. But overall, I'm liking the feel of it. It feels good and grippy in the hand. I don't really have any complaints other than just I feel the kickstand could have been designed a little bit cleaner. So it's a little bit easier not only to take out because like, that's a lot of force. Honestly, you needed to get that out of there so they can make that a little bit easier to pull out uh, giggity as well as a little bit easier to put away because having to do that's a little bit cumbersome, especially if you're on the go or if you're like on an airplane, or whatever. It, it's a little bit chintzy, I guess is the best way to describe it. So kickstand is oh, could be a little bit better, but everything else on this on this uh, grip case truly isn't that bad at all. I really like it. I like these grips as well. They do add a lot of extra uh, grip. Whoa, whoa, crazy. And they do have a cool little carbon fiber look to them. The last thing I do want to get into is the stickers. So these are, I guess, little protective stickers. Again, D brand makes a ton of these. It's probably the most known brand. And I'm not a huge fan of stickers. I've never been a fan of D brand, to be honest with you. I think they're a fine company. I, I'm sure they make high quality stuff, but I just stickers in general, putting it on an electronics to me just never makes sense. And especially if people are, this is a little bit of a rant, but D brand to me kind of makes people have this false idea that their stickers are a replacement for a carrying case, especially when it comes to smartphones. And I just feel that's very farce. It's a dumb marketing way uh, to go about it because people who don't know about technology are probably going to believe them. They're going to think, oh, I don't need a carrying case. I can just put a D brand sticker on my phone and it's completely covered and safe now when that's just obviously not the reality. But that's my only really issue with them. Otherwise, they look cool. I mean, if you want to add some flair to your devices, it's the best way to do it. So here is the carbon fiber stickers. They do have some texture to them, but it's nothing that's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's not super textured. It's not like sticky, uh, but it does have a nice feel to it. It feels actually pretty high quality. I'm not going to lie. That feels really nice. So let's put these on the track pads. I don't know if I'm going to put the back button stickers on. So these are the rear buttons here. I don't know. I barely use these as it is. And I just feel like it'd be a little tricky to put these on properly because there is a curve in here. So to be honest, I'm probably just not going to deal with it. But I am curious to see what it like it, what it's like using these on the track pads on the front. And they're both the exact same size. So I don't think it matters which one goes where. So we'll just peel that off. Try to get this as clean as it can be for right now. That looks pretty good. That actually feels really nice. I'm not going to lie. I like that. So I'll probably keep these on there. I don't think I'll take these off when the camera stops rolling. I do like the feel of these. Very cool. Let's put the other one on there just to finish the aesthetic here. All right. There we go. So that's what it looks like with the carbon fiber stickers on the both the track pads. I actually really like that. That looks pretty clean. And they don't feel like they're slipping off. They don't feel bad. They, they give you a little bit extra texture to them, which feels really nice. So I got to commend them for that. So who knows? Maybe down the road, I might try to put these on the back buttons. But for right now, I'm just not going to deal with it. But that is the grip case with the protected stickers. So very cool. Out of curiosity, I did want to see if with the grip case on, can it fit into the dock? Because I know, I know for a fact this has been actually an issue with a lot of people with the Steam Deck dock, the official one. The slot, I guess, for the actual Steam Deck to sit in is the exact dimensions of the Steam Deck itself. So if you have, you know, any type of case that makes it a little bit thicker on the bottom, it actually doesn't fit uh, into the docking station. So let's just see what happens if it actually fits into place or if it's too big. So, oh, okay, never mind. I was just dumb. It fits. It actually fits really well. It's it's just perfect. I don't know if I can get this to show you guys, but that's from like a front view there. My camera will focus. And then, of course, if we have it sitting down, 
that is perfect. So yes, the answer to that is it will fit just fine. Even if it has a grip case on it, you don't have to worry about taking it off just to put it in the dock. Whereas with the official Steam Deck one, you do have to take every type of third party grip case off in order to slide it perfectly into the Steam Deck dock. Last thing is, does it fit into the official carrying case that comes with the Steam Deck? Let's give it a try. So this is the official carrying case. This is the one that came with the 512 gigabyte model, but I believe it's the same size regardless if you go with a smaller model or not. So it fits into, it fits into place okay. It looks like it's a little bit longer than normal, but let's see if it shuts. So it folds over. It does want to stick up a little bit, but if we zip it, yeah, I didn't have to force that at all and it, it fits. So if you're worried about the grip case being on there and not fitting in the official Steam Deck case, no worries whatsoever. Awesome. All right, so let's get this thing hooked up to my monitor. I'm gonna switch camera angles here and let's give it a try. Alrighty, so we got the Steam Deck hooked up to my external monitor here through the dock as shown previously. I'm using it with a regular HDMI. I don't believe it's like a fancier HDMI cable or anything, and this is only 1080p quality. I, I didn't feel the reason to really upscale to 4K. Again, I don't have a 4K monitor anyway to test it out on, but it is really cool. You get the option to do that. I'm also using a wireless Bluetooth controller, which is the PS5 controller. I'm not using a keyboard and mouse, but with the dock station, you can easily do that with the three USB ports, which is pretty dope. But uh, with that, let's just jump into a game uh, to get it tested out, just to show how it looks and if there's any delay with the image or anything like that or any weird image uh, graphical glitches or whatever. Uh, we're gonna just jump into, let's do Resident Evil Village, why not? More of a graphically intensive game. I'm really curious what it looks like upscaled on a 1080p device running through the Steam Deck. One thing that I thought was kind of weird is by default, the audio still comes through the Steam Deck itself. So you might even hear it in the microphone in the background. I apologize about that. What I found out going through some searches online at the moment, the only way to change the output settings for the audio to actually go through your TV speakers or your soundbar or whatever audio system you're using with your docking station, you actually have to go into the desktop mode on Steam OS, go down to the audio settings, right click properties, and then you can set it to that desired output. It's kind of weird. It doesn't automatically do that. I'm sure with new Steam OS updates that will be implemented in the near future, but that is something to take into account, especially with third party docking stations. It's not going to be just plug and play. Essentially, you will have to do a little bit of tinkering like that uh, for it to work properly. All right, and this is towards the end of the game, but this is just a good example of how well it runs, even upscaled up to 1080p on the Steam Deck. Uh, I am running it with the 40 hertz refresh rate just to make the frames a little bit better, but honestly, it doesn't even look that bad. I mean, I can kind of tell it's not running at 60 frames a second, especially upscale at 1080p, but in terms of like graphics fidelity and the actual texture resolution and just the smoothness of gameplay it's just fine i mean i could easily play this at leisure and not have any issues no input delay either so here's an example hopefully this shows up on camera so it's the typical controller delay you're going to get even if you're playing on a regular ps5 so if you're playing high intensive games, I guess where the tiniest input matters, uh, like fighting games or something like that, then yeah, you are going to notice a slight input delay. But for everything else, especially this, I mean, yeah, it's just fine. Barely can notice a difference. So again, here's a little test. Yeah, it's barely, barely a delay. So pretty awesome. So yeah, Bluetooth controllers work just fine. Uh, upscaling it to 1080p so far seems like a dream. Uh, this is literally a gaming PC that you can plug into any device of your choice using one of these third party docks. Pretty amazing. Literally plugged in. It was ready to go. The only downside is, again, the output for the audio. You need to manually set in the desktop mode. But yeah, that is Resident Evil Village running on the Steam Deck, running through the docking station. 
I really don't have any gripes with this. I think this is super cool. I'm going to leave this docking station in my office. No, maybe even though I do have my own gaming PC right over there in the corner, I think this is something that is really cool to have, especially if there is a game that I specifically only play on the Steam Deck. I can just plug it right in and have a bigger display to mess around with at my leisure. Also, of course, this is really fun to have in the living room. If you have games like Jackbox or something on your Steam Deck for on the go, you can bring it with you on trips and blow up the image to the full screen television just at ease. Super cool. And now, of course, that doesn't even implement the extra peripherals you get with it. So you get the three USB ports and USB-C port. So you can use that for charging. You can use that for extra peripherals like a keyboard and mouse if you want to do actual PC gaming. And yeah, the list goes on. And then, of course, you get the one gigabit Ethernet port, which if you want to use your Steam Deck with wired Internet to get the absolute best connection. Boom. There you go. All right. So as you can see here, we also are in the desktop mode. This is what it looks like if you were to put it onto your big screen from the Steam Dock. And it works great. I mean, honestly, this thing is super cool. And it, it, like I said before, it literally is a full blown gaming PC that you can upscale to up to 4K uh, using an external monitor or display. And it works just like that. The other thing I thought that was really cool is by default, it actually created this as a secondary display to the main display on the Steam Deck itself, which I thought was pretty crazy. So yeah, you literally can have multiple displays with this thing. I don't know what this exact dock can support in terms of external displays, if it can support up to three displays, four displays. I don't really necessarily know. I guess it just comes down to what can the Steam Deck itself support with its current GPU hardware. But I think I saw somewhere out there it can support up to three displays. But again, I, I'm just guessing at that point. I don't necessarily know. But the fact that you can do that with a handheld device still blows my mind. But this is literally a full desktop experience blown up 1080p onto a main display. So just for instance, you can open up the web browser here, make it full screen, and there we go. So we got full blown YouTube right on your Steam Deck. Again, blown up onto a full screen television. Pretty gnarly. So that essentially has been my full unboxing and first impressions of the fun -a lot docking station for the Steam Deck. Again, I will have a link in the description below if you want to go check it out for yourself. In my opinion, at least from first testing it out here, I don't see any issues with it. I don't have any gripes with it. I haven't run into any issues. The build quality actually surprisingly blew me away. It's a really well-built device. It's very sturdy. The Steam Deck fits in it perfectly, even with a grip case on it, which is pretty amazing. And I like that it comes with all the peripherals that you get with the $90 official Steam Deck dock. And it seems to work just fine upscaling it to a 1080p monitor. Now, again, I didn't get to test it out on a 4K monitor, but it says it can withstand that. So that's pretty crazy. Pretty cool. And for $47, I mean, it's basically a steal at that point. So I would highly recommend it giving it a try if you are looking for a docking situation for your Steam Deck to do just this. Use it fully as a desktop computer or you could use it just for gaming like most people probably would. And yeah, it's amazing. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching my video and hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like to share your support as always. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And we'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace out. Hey guys, Nick here again. Thank you so much for watching my video. I did want to go over a quick little thing that I think is pretty cool. A lot of people don't seem to know about it. I've been getting questions all the time in my comments. Hey, how can I support you? How can I donate to you? How can I support the channel for future videos? Well, I'm glad you asked. The best way to support the channel is to go right to this little join area on my channel, or if you're in the video itself, right below every single video is a join button. If you click on this, you can actually become a member of the channel for as little as $1 a month as of right now. It's a promo going on for 50% off. Normally it's $2 a month, but that's still not that much. And truly just a dollar or $2 a month helps exponentially. You guys have no idea how much that helps per month, not only to keep the channel growing, but for me to purchase new items to review and test out on the channel. And then this also includes different perks, of course. So if you were to choose the different versions, there's a $5 version, a $10 and even a 25. Right now, my really good friend, who's an amazing supporter, Thrasher to Blackstang, amazing guy he is a 25 dollars supporter a vicarious god if you will and uh yeah he's been a supporter of the channel for a long time 
definitely go give him a shout out. And that essentially is what will happen at the end of every video from now on. If you are part of the Vicarious crowd in any way, shape or form, you will get a special shout out at the end of every video. You also get a ton of other perks. So you do get a badge next to your name, depending on how long you've been a member. You will get access to different emojis in my chat or in my comments on my videos. So if I ever go live, you can use these in the chat, which is pretty cool. You also get access to member only live chat. You are single handedly keeping me alive. Priority reply to comments. So essentially, if I see that you are a member, I will try to reply to you as fast as possible. If you have a specific question on any of my videos and your name gets added to the end of every new video. And as you go through, you'll see there's different perks for every single one. You get a little bit special stuff every single time, and you'll get a special symbol next to your name at the end of the video if you are part of the Vicarious Gods. So that is just a quick little thing I wanted to talk to you about in this video. Thank you guys so much again for all your support over these last few months. You guys have been amazing, and hope to see you in the memberships. Peace.